Hello again guys, it is I, Freeza700. We are back with some more Hammer 40k lore. This time, the Night Lords. Woohoo! We're going to be talking about their military tactics, their culture, and also we're going to be talking about how they recruit. So, get ready for that, buddies. If you guys wanted to kind of hear a little bit about what they're doing as of now in modern 40k, this video is also going to provide that. So, now that I captured your attention, let's get into it. So, military tactics of the Night Lords. Now, the Night Lords have been known to be terrorists. Now, in my last video, I covered about how they would actually go out of their way and basically terrorize people. They were sanctioned by the Emperor to be terrorists, which is awesome. That's what they were good at. They were good at murdering civilians, and they still live up to that military strategy to this day. Now, when it comes to the military aspect of murdering civilians, essentially, back before the Horus Heresy... What happened was, any world that decided not to pay its imperial tight, or any world that uh, decided that it was going to just rebel against the emperor, because they just didn't learn their fucking lesson, what they would do instead of full-on reconquering the world again, instead they would just simply go, oh, oh, that's a nice convoy you have there of just straight up civilians. It'd be a shame if we just boarded the vessel and butchered everybody. Which is exactly what they did. They would always, always, always go for the soft, squishy targets. And after the Horus Heresy, they still do this. The reason being of this is that when you kill civilians and you butcher them, and then you just keep showing the gory details of how you butchered them to the enemy population, they're willing to surrender, and it will give you a reputation where people will surrender to you before you even fucking land. Well, after the Horus Heresy, they still live up to this tactic, as I've said, but now they're kind of ramping it up. So, when Conrad Kurz was their Primarch, he believed in justice, and he sees them as breaking the law, so he sends his murderers onto them, and all of a sudden, they're willing to comply with the law. Well, Conrad Kurz knew his legionnaires were nothing but a bunch of fucking sickos who were murderers and criminals in their own right. He knew this. But, here's the thing, is that without Conrad Kurz, there's no one to really chain them down. Now mind you, Conrad Kurz was fucking batshit insane, and he told them to raid the galaxy and just destroy the Empire. Well, because Conrad Kurz didn't really redeem himself, and he's dead now, now they just raid indiscriminately. And now they don't attack civilians because they broke the law, they just attack you because they can they do this to allies as well. They kill you because they can. They don't kill you if you're a warrior. They don't kill you if you stand a chance. They just go after your loved ones. They just go after anyone who is undefended. These are the targets they always go to. The reason being is that they enjoy to kill. It's almost like a Slaneshi thing. They live for the pleasure of killing. They love to murder. Now, if the Eldar god Cain really loved humans, he would love the Night Lords, because that's exactly all they do. It's just murder. That's all they ever care for. There are some Night Lords who actually go on their own and will terrorize a whole hive city by themselves. All of a sudden, you'll hear about baby cribs being just left a bloody mess of a guy just hiding in the fucking shadows, hiding inside your closet, and the moment you leave your baby alone, boom. All of a sudden, you're going to hear a quick scream that's immediately silenced. And there you go, there goes your one-year-old baby. He's now just a red paste inside the crib. And that's what the Night Lords would do sometimes. Now, usually they're not by themselves. Usually they're actually pirates. That's right, you heard me. So that means that they're actually floating around space and they're one cruiser, two cruisers, not too big of a fleet. Because they're a very fractured legion in 40k. In 30k, they were united, but once Conrad Kurz was dead, they started splitting into warbands. Well, now in 40k, they are totally fucking split. Now, in the Horus Heresy, they had, like, around 90,000 to 110,000 Astartes, if I remember correctly. But as it stands now, I, I can't see them any higher than that. There is no way in hell they have over 50,000 dudes. They're probably around the safest number, I would say, is around 10,000. So, they don't even have the numbers to really be fighting in frontal engagements. And they don't plan to. In their culture and beliefs, they believe 
that one should assert their dominance no matter where they go, no matter when the battle takes place. It, hell, even before a fight begins, they have to assert their dominance, whether that's in tactical positions, whether that's eliminating the civilians' populace so they don't have a home to go back to, whether it's just, oh, well, my weapon is longer than yours, so therefore I got more reach. It could be any way possible. They've already asserted that dominance to you. Because, again, they're all about psychological shit. Even if they suck dick with a spear, they'll just bring it just so that way it intimidates you that now they have a reach that you do not have. This is the way a Night Lords fight. Also about fighting, Night Lords are cheap bastards. They will use dirty tactics. This is stuff like kicking someone in the nuts. Um... Holding out a hand for friendship, but really you have a dagger behind your back ready to stab the fucker. Stuff like that. Any dirty tactic, they will do. Like, you'll see a Night Lord chain sword locked with an Ultramarine. And right when it's getting really tense, the Night Lord is just going to simply headbutt the Marine and then slash his chest open with the sword. Yeah, it's a dirty tactic, but you have to remember that the Night Lords don't have a, co a code of honor. They don't have this sense of creed either. They don't have this unity either. So they don't mind sacrificing one another if it means they'll get an advantage. They kind of are more or less doing their own thing. Now, that being said, they have no creed, no honor. They have no unity. What else do they not have? Well, in their culture, they don't look up to the chaos gods. That is something that is very interesting. So they do not look up to the chaos gods at all. Now, there are certain individual warbands before you fucking say it. Yes, I know. There are some of them who do look up to Chaos Gods and they do worship the Chaos Gods. But typically, a Night Lords follow under the Chaos Undivided. But even then, they're not crazy about it. They're not, they don't have a dogmatic culture in the sense that they're like totally devoted to them. They actually prefer not to be anywhere near religious. And this comes from that sense that Conrad Kurz was always a paranoid person. He was always paranoid with the Emperor, and he didn't really trust the Emperor 100%. And the Emperor himself always judged Lower God, always judged um, Conrad Kurz and always told him what he was doing was wrong, what he believes is wrong, stuff like that. So Conrad Kurz never really trusted the Emperor. Well, to Conrad Kurz, following the Chaos Gods is exactly the same as following the Emperor. He doesn't trust them, and for good reason. Yeah, Zinch will give him untold amounts of knowledge, but at what cost? So in this sense, you could say the Night Lords are reasonable. They know that, yes, there are benefits to being with the Chaos, but there's a lot of downsides that come with it. Like, yes, you follow Corn, and now you're stronger, so now no Marine could ever topple you. So yeah, now you're more dominant, more terrifying. But on the flip side, you will literally lose your mind, and at any point, one of your own comrades could cut you down, just from the sheer bloodlust that Corn would give them. So they know better not to really devout themselves. So they will use some demons every now and then, but not as their main army. So if you ever decide to make an army of the Night Lords and you decide, ah, yeah, let's throw some demons. Yeah, those are terrifying. Only demons that are of the undivided. They do not use demons that are very specific, like, oh, I don't know, Slaneshi demons. Ones with whips and titties and, uh, Thick asses. Yeah. They don't have any of those, unfortunately. But they use more of the Chaos Undivided. That being said, what are they doing as of the time periods? So after the Horus Heresy, they were sitting with Conrad Kurz outside of the Eye of Terror. They never retreated with the other legions into the Eye of Terror. They didn't care for it. Now, because of this... Their gene seed is actually pretty pure still. It has some minor taints. And speaking about taints, the Night Lords are much like the Iron Warriors in the sense that they actually look down upon mutation. They don't like mutation at all. So if a Night Lord's ever mutated in some sort of way, he's going to hide it or he's going to cut it off. That's the only way he's going to deal with it. That being said, around the 32nd millennium, they were finally kicked out of the Imperium and they were forced into the Eye of Terror, whether they liked it or not. There was no other way for them to really live in the Imperium at that time, so they retreated back to the Eye of Terror. Now, once inside the Eye of Terror, that's where you start seeing your mutations 
and you start seeing more fanatical elements of the Night Lords who are starting to actually preach to the Dark Gods rather than just acknowledge their existence but not really credit them for anything. But even then, a vast majority of them are still fractured. Like, at most, you may see a thousand of them. You're not going to see a lot. Besides that, there is one warband in particular that is massive. It's the vast majority of the Night Lords. But again, that's like a one-time exception. Most of the time, you will always see them as mercenaries. That's right, mercenaries. They will hire out their services to just about anybody, except for the Imperium, because they have a personal grudge against the Imperium at large. But even then, they will still terrorize Chaos troops. That's right, they will. Speaking about that... How do they recruit Chaos Troops? Well, there's kind of rumors as to how they do this. One rumor is that they just take infants. This is why I talked about a dead infant earlier, is that sometimes the Night Lord will, instead of killing the infant, will just take it and raise it to believe in the way the Night Lords believe, and then we'll just turn them into a Night Lord over time. That's nice. That's really cool. The other other way of doing it is just by simply absorbing whatever warband they just terrorized and beat into submission. But that's very rare, and usually whenever they do that, they just use them as cannon fodder. They really don't give a fuck. And then let's talk about what happened after 32k. So now in the 41st millennium, now that the Eye of Terror is kind of sprouting about, the Imperium is fractured. But not only is the Imperium fractured, here's the best part. The Imperial worlds are terrified. They're scared shitless. They don't know what the fuck to do. They're like, shit, God Emperor, please help us. Well, guess whose territory this goes into? That's right. Out of all the legions that could have ever been happy about this situation, the Night Lords are really loving this opportunity. As I said, they just murder just to murder. So they may take over the world, but they don't actually have any intention of ruling that world. They just want that world so that way they can always have a fresh stack of bodies to go murder at some point in time. Besides that, that's pretty much all they've been doing is establishing little minor empires throughout the Imperium and then ambushing any Imperial armies that come their way. There was a recent engagement too where they captured a shit ton of Imperial vessels. And the Imperial vessels were there to strictly destroy the Night Lords who were rampaging their citizens. But they got ambushed because the Dark Gods concealed the Night Lord's presence. So when their ships finally were in range, it was too late. As I said, they use any advantage to their, to their you know, advantage. Huh. Fucking ironic enough as it is to say that. 